page, I added a link to it as well. So the main LSR working group page has a has a, a separate uh, link to the status. Uh, the highlights, at least you you uh, you all might think this is a rather parochial view of this of the highlights, but I think it's because I've worked on in some capacity I, I've worked or been the document shepherd for these documents. I think one thing is we've had the Yang models. We're going to go forward with them. Uh, both were pretty close on OSPF. Actually, I'm just I realized we needed one more IPR call, and I'm just rounding up all the contributors. The authors are all readily. We've been do, doing the design meetings, and ISIS is coming shortly. We got some Yang doctor uh, comments, and we had a Miss Anonymous Stephens uh, working on those. <coughs> Uh, the MPLS data plane, SR documents, are pretty much all uh, working group last called and, you know, the, the, uh, or on, uh, or, or waiting on uh, Elvaro. So uh, we're, 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 those, that's another, those are multi-year documents that as shepherd up to them, I'm glad to see those go by. The other documents that I think are really interesting, we have presentations, so I'm not going to waste any time on those. Uh, let's see. And I know we have some, a lot of different flooding uh, proposals. We may have an interim on this. I'm kind of, I don't really think it's a good idea to try and do it at the end of the routing working group because who knows, you know, exactly when it is and we'll probably lose people. So. We might have an interim to talk about the drafts that have a lot of overlap, and that's it. Okay, should we go with the first presentation? You want to say, yeah, you want to say something? Uh, yeah, Les, Les asked to to get some push forward on a couple of things. We, uh, uh, he's like, what's going on with this? Mention it. So uh, the uh, TE um, this draft is submitted. Um, the is Uma here. That were, I think, is he the hold up on uh, the segment routing extensions? No. No. What is the hold up on that? Eight offers. Uh, I told, I told, uh, I told, right. I told yeah, him to get down yeah, to five. Yeah, okay. It's right. me. Yeah. I'm the hold up. Never mind. It's, it's uh, just we just need to narrow the author <laughs> list. Yeah, but I mean, so, so it's what, have you done the ISG submission or do we have to resolve the author issue first? Let's see, resolve first, right? I mean, it should be. It, it'll go to Alvaro, and he'll probably have the same comment. So yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, we'll so we'll take care of that. Do, I just, do first. I'm just saying, you yeah. know, it might take us a few days to, you know, see who gets the short straw or whatever. So, <laughs> so that's yeah. the only thing holding. Yeah. It up. Okay. okay. So the first one is less, I think, right? Is it in order? On this yeah, thing? yeah, they're in order. Yep. Let's see, you got a few of them. Oh, one thing in my in my hurry. Do, you all know about the note well, that if you know about any IPR, you're obligated to uh, disclose it as early as possible. Seems to work. And I'm sure if you've attended any other what your meetings. Oh, did we that. did we didn't do it. We didn't well. do the note well. Yeah. One one second. It's right here. So you want to show it now? Uh, here's the routing. <laughs> uh, here's the routing work. It's the same thing. Uh, so note well. Noted. Sorry about that last. Okay, um, I'm Les Ginsberg. Uh, this is a, a joint presentation on the, the two TE attribute drafts, uh, one for ISIS, uh, one for OSPF. Uh, these are changes since IETF 101. Um, we added the uh, TE metric. Somehow we had overlooked that. We added that as a sub-TLV that was supported in the per application encoding. Uh, we also uh, allowed that the per application TLV or sub TLV could be associated with the L2 link bundle TLV in ISIS. 
And we moved the registry that's defining the application bit identifiers uh, because it's being shared by ISIS and OSPF. Uh, we moved it to the, to the IGP parameters uh, registry. And OSPF E3 support was added. This was actually presented in Montreal, uh, but uh, just included it in the list. Um, we feel these drafts are mature. There's been a lot of discussion about this. These have been uh, three years uh, in the evolution. Um, there are some implementations, so we feel like uh, both drafts are ready for last call. Um, I will mention there's one minor editorial change to the OSPF draft that's coming, which is just to make sure that the length of the application bit identifiers is, is a multiple of four bytes, which is consistent with the way OSPF uh, does encoding. Uh, but other than that, um, we'd, we'd like to see these go to last call. Does anybody have any, any objections to this call? We're going to make what we'll make on the list. I guess I'm a, I'm a co-author of one of these drafts, but and like uh, although they're not, I don't think I don't think we have any implementations that are released. But at least there's been a test of people actually coding to it and testing with it already with with this with these encodings. So. I'm glad I did that before Chris entered the room. I see he's in the back. <laughs> okay, so we'll, <laughs> so we'll take it to the list. The, the, the working group last call. Can we just keep going? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it just keeps feeding? Yeah. Uh, do you need a new presentation? Yeah. Okay. yeah. You seem to be more dexterous. I don't know. Than, than, than me on this. Oh. No. Just, I, I jinxed you. Yeah, you did. Why doesn't it do square though? Maybe this. I had so much trouble with that. Oh, time. there we go. Okay, um, this is the uh, an update on the restart signaling uh, BIS draft for ISIS. Um, here's the history. Uh, we first introduced this in March and presented it uh, in London. Um, there was uh, an update. Uh, the update was basically to include uh, an appendix that had the summary of the changes uh, from RFC 5306, and we presented that in Montreal. Um, this was adopted as a working group document in October. Um, the really, in, in the eight months here uh, since we first uh, presented this, uh, there really hasn't been any significant comments other than to summarize the changes. Um, so um, this is a really a, a modest extension to the existing restart uh, uh, protocol for, or for restart functionality for ISIS. Uh, and in the absence of any concerns that have been expressed, uh, we'd like to move forward to the last call. I should also mention this functionality is equivalent to what's been in OSPF for many, many years. Uh, okay, Does is there any objection in the room to taking this to working group last call? Does anybody think this is not ready for that? For the, who's taking our minutes? Oh, yeah, never mind. Okay, there's nobody, nobody thinks that. Nobody objects. Okay. Next. The rest of those slides are just for backup. Okay, this is a, an update on uh, the spine leaf extensions for ISIS. Um, we've presented this multiple times in the past, so uh, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time going through the details. Uh, just a quick overview. Um, this is uh, a fairly modest uh, extension to ISIS. Um, it's, uh, we believe it, it addresses a, a number of issues uh, in uh, the data center topologies. Um, 
it uh, ad particularly addresses the flooding problem to the leaf nodes. In most cases, uh, there's no flooding done to the leaf nodes, but we do have uh, extensions to uh, allow us to recover when there's uh, incomplete connectivity between uh, some of the spine nodes and the leaf nodes so that uh, we don't black hole traffic. Um, we can advertise uh, uh, essentially the routes that are uh, that uh, need to be uh, exceptions from the default route that you would otherwise use from from the leaf nodes. Um, so if if there are link failures, uh, we do address that and, and avoid the black hole. Um, we are compatible with a number of other extensions. Uh, the dynamic flooding extensions can be used in conjunction uh, with the extensions defined here. Um, there also are some mechanisms uh, uh, that we introduced in support of uh, uh, Russ White's open fabric draft, uh, particularly some of the uh, auto provisioning uh, portions. Uh, we made a few modest changes uh, uh, since uh, uh, the last ITF uh, based on comments we had received, uh, largely from uh, Tony P. Uh, thanks very much to him. Um, we had support for the horizontal links uh, between uh, the leaf nodes, and we had a flag that would indicate that the leaf node could be used as an alternate uh, default route. Uh, the feedback that we got was this was adding unnecessary complexity. So we have removed that, and essentially we're just not uh, making use of, of the horizontal links between uh, leaf nodes uh, if they exist. Uh, we also clarified that in these cases where some of the spine nodes don't have full connectivity to the leaf nodes, that you might have multiple link down events, and uh, uh, therefore you might have to exchange uh, some of the uh, uh, protocol extensions to multiple spine nodes, uh, not just between uh, one leaf node and one spine node. Uh, this is not a change, it's just a clarification. Um, and we also added text that suggested that although the extensions we defined are intended to be really primarily targeted targeted uh, for uh, the the tier zero between the leaf nodes and, and uh, the next layer of spine nodes, that in theory you could use these extensions uh, for uh, additional layers. So uh, again, this draft has been presented, I think this is going to be at least the fourth time. Uh, I didn't go back and count exactly, but, uh, but I know we've presented it multiple times. Uh, we have uh, made changes based on the comments we've received. And so we're back here, uh, not for the first time, <laughs> but uh, we, we'd like to ask for working group adoption. So um, I guess I have a few comments. Uh, it, the dynamic, uh, the, the dense flooding compatibility with Tony, Tony Lee's mm -hmm. um, and et al. Um, is that just using the, the advertisement of the distributed algorithm, the fact that it's using spine, this, this algorithm? Well, no. So with the spine leaf extensions, essentially the, the leaf nodes, the, the uh, LSPs from the leaf nodes are not part of uh, the flooding. So it's, we've, it's you know, yeah, so they're just not part. So you, you use the dynamic flooding extensions for the upper tiers and you oh, use I the see. spine leaf extensions uh, basically to, to almost completely eliminate the flooding to the leaves. So, it, and it, I mean, sort of, it's kind of like overloaded LSP operation for the leaves, I guess, but anyway, right. Uh, they're advertising their own LSP with no flooding to them. No, so when you said the horizontal, um, I just read the reread the draft. I don't remember that being talked about. Obviously, you said it was removed. Um, do you talk about not flooding over those horizontal links between leaves? No, no, no. So the previous versions of the draft, we allowed that there was a B bit that essentially a leaf node could say. I'm a potentially a backup path for the default route. Instead of going to the spine, if your spine is compromised, if your spine neighbor is compromised, you could come to me. Uh, we, the feedback that we got was this is just an unnecessary complexity. You don't mean compromise, you mean failure. Uh, okay. 
<laughs> but but so you still when a leaf comes up, it floods to all its links, the horizontal and to the spine. So the the yeah. So the the leaf nodes are nominally going to flood to their spine neighbors. Okay, the idea that you is that you don't that the leaf nodes do not have to have the full LSP database. They just need to know, hey, what spines can I use for the default route? And if there are some compromised uh, connectivity, then they need to get some uh, advertisements from the spine nodes to say, well, for this set of prefixes, um, you know, you can't use me. No, I, I understand that. I'm saying what, I didn't see anything in the draft that talked about the horizontal links. You're saying they can be there, but what happens when they are? Does it flood, do the leaves flood, do the leaves flood their, I know they're only doing their own LSP, right? And they're not gonna hold on to any other, but are they flooding their own LSPs to their leaf neighbors in that case? Or it, it, I guess I'm just asking for that to be covered, right? Because uh, it's not going to do the R, you know, it's not going to do the R L exchange. It'll be like L L, right? Correct. And what happens in that? You know, that, that's all I'm saying is I didn't see what that was. Damien, uh, do you remember? I'm I'm drawing a blank. Yeah, I, I think naming. Uh, naming Shun uh, with Cisco systems. Yeah, uh, I think we before we were saying we have a B bit if if we can go through this to reach the other one. Uh, now, if we really in this particular case, I think from flooding point of view, from leave to leave, we don't do anything special. They just flood it over. But, but we don't flood our neighbor's LSP back over there. Right, uh, right, right. Yeah. Maybe get out a yeah. section on the relationship to horizontal length. Right, right. I think we probably need to put yeah. some statement yeah. saying we need yeah, yeah, to put yeah. high metric between those two or something like that. Right? Yeah, I mean, it's not particularly useful because right. it's not, we don't have the, the topology connectivity. Right. Yeah. yeah. I just, I just had one comment as, as a working group member. Speaking as working group member, AC Land of Cisco Systems, I think this has little overlap with the other proposals. So I think, and it's like it's a, mod, uh, a, a very modest proposal. If there's any overlap in functionality, it's an overlap. It does a small subset of what Rift does, you know, but it, but it's, you know, it, it, uh, so I don't, I don't think it has overlap with the remainder of, so I think we could safely working group, la, working group adopt, shouldn't call this one, without uh, worrying about overlap. Other opinions? Well. You don't, you don't agree? Uh, I, I, was I haven't decided, I haven't decided yet on whether I, I, I think you're, I think we're close, I, I don't think that the, the work is, I mean, other than the, what I just mentioned, right, I, I think the work is kind of done, right? I, I don't mm -hmm. think that, it's just a question of um, do we push it forward right as we're about to sort of collapse what well, I think we're going to be collapsing a bunch of other flooding stuff. Uh, you know, do we do we do this one kind of ships in the night with those or do we, no, it, I don't want to stall the work either because like I said, like it's you done. Said, it, it, but, it can be done in the edge and then you prune that. Yeah, these are this 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 is definitely a complimentary proposal. Yeah, it to just, the, the it just, it flooding just reduction proposal. It just handles that bottom tier, right? I mean, it's not. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we've allowed for the fact you could use this on the upper tiers, but that's not our primary target. Tony P. Troublemakers Incorporated. <laughs> and I think a, a, um, a key discussion on this draft, so like independent of all the other stuff, is will it go to the, what is it, 7356, or will it keep the stuff on the hellos? And frankly, I think we should push for the 7356, because then it has potential. Then you can grow lots of other stuff. Yeah, I think that for the uninitiated, 7366 is a scoped LSPs. Yeah. So right now the draft allows you could put this in hellos 
or you could put this in the link scoped LSPs. And what I you think do clearly both the link, and they contradict you. Yeah. The link scoped LSPs are a better solution. So I have, you know, personally, uh, so I, 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 I'll, I'll consult with my co-authors, <laughs> okay. but okay. Yeah. I, I have no objection. Yeah, okay. So that's common from me, independent of the adoption and everything else. So is this, I guess my question to you as the chairs is, because we've been here before, and basically the answer before was wait. So what's the answer now in terms of our, can we ask the working group for adoption? Yeah, we can, we can do that. I mean, I'm, I just have my own opinion. I'm not saying as a chair, I don't think we're ready to ask that. I, I really wish we could do that interim, you know, if we're going to do an interim on the flooding stuff. Yeah, yeah, and, and we disagree on this point. You know, I think this is, uh, it doesn't have overlap. So the fewer things we're trying to coalesce in the interim, the better. And this just is, we might as well, we can do this as an interim enhancement. The other thing that's interesting about this work, we have uh, implementations going. So I hate to delay it while we're waiting on the, these separate, this, these all these drafts that are related to uh, subset or separate flooding topologies from the total uh, uh, routing domain topology. It, well, like I said, I don't object as a chair. So okay. we can ask the list. But okay. does anyone else object in the room to this being working group last call? No, adopted. Uh, working group adopted. Hey, Sorry. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's go. Okay. <laughs> Tony P again. So if I would be running this group, <laughs> uh, I would probably, you know, try to get into 7356 uh, format. I mean, these hellos are, are an accident waiting to happen. So, and so, so I you're, think you're, the flooding you, is not really a problem. So, so it's you're, an not the, you're not the chair anymore, but you're still a <laughs> member, so you're objecting. No, no. So no, so, I'm suggesting that it will be like, you know. So Good Tony, I think stone. that I think that all you're uh, suggesting, and and yeah. uh, I support this, is we've got two mechanisms to yeah. do these exchanges. You're suggesting get rid of the hello mechanism. Yeah, resolve and it. right. Yeah, I, and I and the other fine. one, I, I I think the flooding is an optional optimization. So if this is really the stumbling stone, you can just shelve it for the moment, elegantly, right? The draft works nevertheless. It's an optimization, and then when things comes to fruition, you figure out what you do with that stuff. The yeah, draft I honestly preclude, think, preclude yeah. you from reusing anything. I yeah, mean, I, just I don't observations. Think, I don't think there's any changes that would be required to this draft with no. the flooding optimization. Correct. Flooding optimizations might have to take into account the signaling from this draft. Correct. Not yes. the other way around. But that is independent. I mean, whoever comes up with any solution, I mean, this will you have the signaling, and they, like you say, they have yeah. to properly deal with it that this the leaves cannot flood through, right? Yeah. I, I mean, I'm not objecting, but I'm suggesting to asked for resolution of the mechanism. This is the time before the hex propagate. Okay? Why don't okay. you re rebuy that? Maybe, maybe they might pre preemptively uh, decide on that. But why don't you rebuy that when we call for adoption? Sure. Yeah, I'll put them in the list. No problem. Okay. That sounds reasonable. Yeah. Nai Ming Shun again. Uh, yeah. Uh, I agree with the uh, uh, Les and the Tony. And we can move to this uh, link local. Uh, signaling, but the original intention I sort of insist to use the hello is f uh, uh, let's say we only have tier zero and the tier one, and above tier one there is a rich connections. Uh, for example, there's a ring uh, among all the spines, right? So in this particular case, the only thing you need to do for this draft is signal. I do not want the flooding back, that's all. So for this simple purpose, uh, if there's any link breakage or something, there is a possible to reroute uh, in the upper layer. So in that kind of condition, I was thinking, you know, you only need uh, probably 100 lines of a code to support this. So that's the idea. But yeah, uh, if we are going to adoption or something, we certainly listen to whatever the yeah, uh, group opening. Sarah, are you? You ready? 
you're done. Yeah, that did uh, that caught me a little by surprise. I guess we'll take that to the list. Uh, the, uh, what the working group last call? No, adoption. Adoption. <laughs> Why? Oh boy, more coffee. Fast tracking. I, 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 what is this? Is this this arrow? Oh. And then here, let me go back. This one, right? It is, yep, yep, that's it. Is that right? Yep, this is it. This dot, this, this is a ball that covers both OSPF and uh, ISIS now. No, 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 that's not. That's, yeah, that's not, why sorry, I didn't sorry. think that was right. Okay. Uh, I must have put them in the wrong order. We sorry. need the dense, dense. Uh, yeah, it is. <laughs> I think I missed it. That's uh, uh, I can pull it up too. Oh, you can? I'm gonna try. Okay. But sorry. This is when Michigan J Frog comes out. I don't know how I got seven, seventeen uh, proposals. In. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I'm. I'm Why is? Do I, can I plug in the thing? Do you have a, do you have a adapter? Yes, I have an adapter. Oh, but is it one of those things? <laughs> yeah. We don't have, we don't have the right tools. <laughs> This one or this one? It's one of those. Are we going to break it? Let me see if I can find it. Too. It's HDMI, right? Yeah. I can just plug it directly in. Well, your laptop has one. I get an older laptop. It's not working. Go to your yeah. We're gonna be there soon. Oh, sorry. Oh, here it is. It's here. Dynamic flooding update. Why is it not? About this one, it's it, together. Uh, 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 so it did flash. We saw your screen for like one second. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna see why it why it doesn't. It's it should be there. Maybe it's the wrong order. I don't know. I'll check here. This is a Okay. This is a different page. Do you have it on your laptop? Yeah. Do you have HDMI? Uh, <laughs> okay. Do you want to move to a different presentation while I, I can transfer it? Sure. Let's go to. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll just switch to the next presentation and then I'll get yours up. For this. Okay. You want to put, put it back in here then? Yeah. Just pull up whatever the last one is. And I'll, I'll upload yeah. this. Yeah. You know, it's. It, it's on the meeting materials. It's just not on the agenda. I don't understand that. Oh, okay. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll figure. Okay. Yeah. 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 
that it? That's just the agenda, right? Oh, yeah. Here it is. It's, a, it's right there. Well, why in the fuck was that? <laughs> <laughs> so, good morning. Uh, my name is Sarah Chen from Arista Networks. So, I will give an update on dynamic flooding on dense graphs. Uh, first, a quick review. Um, the basic idea of dynamic flooding is to decouple a relatively sparse flooding topology from the physical topology. Um, this draft has focused on extending the existing link state protocols to um, support dynamic flooding in both centralized and uh, distributed mode without any restriction on the physical topology. Um, this draft didn't intend to define the algorithm for computing the flooding topology. Uh, these are the TLVs that have been introduced uh, um, to support dynamic flooding with ISS and OSPF. It covers uh, the air leader selection and uh, flooding topology encoding. Um, since last meeting, um, there are many editorial changes and uh, also two important changes are made to this draft. Uh, we introduced uh, new protocol elements uh, for both ISIS and the OSPF. And we'll also discuss the treatment of topology events in more details. In particular, we introduced the concept of temporary flooding. Um, the basic idea is uh, to allow the node to flood on the link that does not belong to the flooding topology. I will talk more about it later. Now I'm gonna go through the new protocol elements we introduced in this update. Um, first uh, are the ISIS TLVs. We introduced uh, uh, a dynamic flooding sub-TLV. So if a node supports dynamic flooding, it can insert this sub-TLV to its router capability TLV. And uh, the knowledge of which nodes support dynamic flooding can help optimize the flooding topology. In this sub-TLV, the node can tell which algorithms it supports for fl flooding calculation. And this knowledge can help the air leader to select the algorithm in the distributed mode. We also introduced a new flooding request TLV. And this TLV is used for requesting temporary flooding from the neighbor node. This is the format for the new ISI's dynamic flooding sub TLV. It's pretty straightforward. We have the type field, the length field, and the multiple algorithm fields. Um, each algorithm field is a numerical identifier in the range of 0 to 255. And it identifies the algorithm used to calculate in the flooding topology. And we can have multiple algorithm fields here. And this is the new ISI's flooding request TLV. And it may be included in the IIH. Um, in the P2P mode, there's only one type of uh, hello. So, um, but the node needs to tell the neighbor which level it wants the temporary flooding to happen. So here we added a circle typed field. The orbit and the scope field um, is meant for the nodes that support this IFC 7356. I will not go into details. 
Um, very similarly, we introduced the new OSPF TLVs, the dynamic flooding sub TLV, which will be in the router information LSA for both V2 and V3. For um, flooding request, we introduce, uh, we propose um, option bit in the LS type one, extended options and uh, field field. So here is the format of OSPF dynamic flooding sub TLV. Uh, all the fields have the same meaning as those in the ISIS. Okay, so as promised, I will talk more about the temporary flooding. So um, why do we need temporary flooding? I will go through one example. Uh, let me go through the first case. Let's uh, think a, a new link comes up then the two nodes will form the adjacency and uh, think there are link state database. These are all done using the existing protocol mechanism. In a normal case, both adjacency nodes are connected to the flooding topology and this new link state update will be flooded on the flooding topology. But in some case, if the one of the adjacency node is not connecting to the flooding, no flooding topology, then this guy will not receive any link state updates until a new flooding topology is calculated and uh, it becomes part of the new flooding topology. So dynamic um, flooding still works, but uh, it will slow down the convergence significantly. So we propose here that in this case, and um, to use temporary flooding, it works like this. So um, when the li new link comes up, if the node thinks it's not connecting to any flooding topology, then it uh, enables the flooding locally, and then send a request to flooding for, uh, to the neighbor asking for the flooding, the temporary flooding. The neighbor, once it receives the flooding request, it will start flooding on this new link. The temporary flooding will continue until the new flooding topology is calculated and the both adjacency nodes are connected to this new to topology. So there's another case where temporary flooding can be used. So um, if a local link fails and this node has one or only uh, or no connection to the flooding topology, it can also enable temporary flooding on one or a small subset of its links for fast convergence. But here, um, we do not recommend that this node blindly requests temporary flooding on all its links because this might overwhelm the node uh, itself um, and cause some instability. So as you can see that there's a trade-off during the design of dynamic flooding. On one hand, if ex uh, excessive flooding may cause the um, control plane to overload and lead to network instable. On the other hand, um, too less flooding may slow down the convergence. So there's no quantitative or, um, measure of how much flooding is optimal. Um, so when we choose the flooding topology and enable temporary flooding, we should take into account this trade-off. And that's my presentation. Hi, Tony Lee, Arista. So if there's no discussion, the authors and design team would like to ask for working group adoption at this time. Yeah, I, I, uh, I think we just have to resolve one issue, but uh, I, I think it's ready for that working group adoption call as well. I don't know what you see. The, the issue I think is that there, that we have another we have another draft out there that is very similar. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Huai Mo Chen from Huawei Technology. I think uh, in working group, uh, at least I uh, have two comprehensive, almost complete uh, solutions for flooding reduction. And then we have, uh, I think I remember in last ITF, we have uh, discussions. Some of people propose merge two drafts. 
And also, I think uh, uh, one of the child also have indication maybe merge, right? So I don't know whether we just uh, one draft move forward, just left the other draft, and then those people work also working very hard. And then I don't know, is that a, so is we, that a fail? We just uh, right. I, I, we need a, we need to have more discussions. Yeah. So. Um, I knew this was going to be a little contentious, so uh, I, I went back and I <laughs> I looked at the timelines, right? And um, Tony published his draft, on the, it, which was um, about a central controller and distributing a flooding topology on January seventh. Uh, then the the distributed flooding reduction draft was published in March. They both presented at IETF 101. Um, the distributed algorithm was found wanting, right? There was there was problems that were called at the mic, uh, like breakage of a tr triangle topologies. And it, the point being that it, it wasn't fully baked, right? Uh, Tony's kind of was a little bit more baked. Then we had presentations that, it, during the transition to the next IETF, we had both work, both works adopted sort of the, the concept from each other. Tony brought in the idea of distributed, which really was just eliminating the flooding topology and putting an algorithm field in. Um, and you, you added in the centralized solution. So, and, and, and you also had a distributed algorithm, which would still fit within Tony's work, right? He's not, the, or Tony et al. They're, they're not defining distributed algorithms. So I think one way forward here would be for you to work on the distributed algorithm that you had thought of before, right? And that that, that would then not conflict at all, right? But to have to, basically the other thing is that, you know, I mean, this is, okay, this is my opinion as, as a member of the working group. The, 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 there's a, Tony's draft is really well written. And yeah, it also, I think you know, and it also, and also the flooding topology distri distribution is uh, very much a, a KISS solution, right? It's very simple. And when I, when it, this is just my opinion as a member of the working group. But when I look at your solution, it, it seems a lot more complex, right? And, and I'm not sure what the win is there. So the, anyway, that's my opinion as a, as a member and also the history here. So um, I don't, I, I would hope, you know, the, the, I think that, one way forward would be for you to work on the distributed algorithm that you had thought of before, and then that can uh, advance in parallel, and then we have no conflict. I don't know what other people's opinion are. I think uh, uh, regarding the days, I think uh, there's a meeting or there's a proposal in some kind of, uh, I think Jeff hosted the meeting regarding the requirement for data center, right? So in, in, from that point, and then people working on the flood reduction, and then the days, first we also uh, pr uh, presented the flooding reduction on IETF 101, right? And then I also remember that some of people think uh, the distributed one is uh, more practical, and that's the different opinions, right? And also, I, I think uh, we have, uh, Regarding the solution, people also have different opinion. Um, this solution is better, this solution is simpler. I think maybe after both drafts presented, and then we we should have discussions from technical point of view, from whatever point of view, and then I don't know whether we can have discussion, which one is better, which one is simpler, or maybe combine together, maybe can improve one draft or another, and then have a whole solution is much better. I think for those different approaches or options, we may we have should have some discussions, right? Either is a centralized one, go one draft and distributed one, another draft, whatever will merge together. I speaking as a chair, I like uh, the way that Tony, uh, uh, I mean, I mean that Chris said uh, positioned the drafts, so that way we'd have this draft at the top as a uh, for dynamic flooding and the two flavors centralized and distributed and your your draft would be one distributed uh algorithm and 
the one that Comfort is going to present would be another one. And I think that would, I think that would allow all of them to be positioned and go forward. So I'm, I'm supportive of that uh, speaking as chair, because I, I lived through the Monet, uh, three drafts as Alvaro did as well. And we don't want to get, we don't want to adopt multiples and say, okay, let the best man win it because sometimes they go on, you know, BPLS was another thing. I mean, they're, you know, where they had two, two different signaling solutions and, and they both went on and what it did is it diminished the value of both of them. And in a Monet, what we had to do at the end was they all became experimental and they kind of fell into obscurity and we definitely don't want to lose this work. And I think I'd, I'd support Chris's straw man. I mean, we could put that straw man and discuss the straw man he's got on the list and why it not rather because we are going to run out of time. I'll, uh, I think that's what we should do. Yes, and right now the uh, Tony's draft and our draft, I think, resolve the same issues, right? I think it may be just, just a different approach and some are different and some are the same. I think it. Okay, okay. thank you. Are you finished, Stacey, Chris? I was just going to say, that in terms of uh, splitting the, the algorithm work from the mechanistic part of it, it seems to be the, the, the piece that makes the most sense. Um, so just Chris Martin from Arista, I think that would be the better approach. I just want to make that claim. Yeah, Gunch is next, then you. Yeah, about this. So I'm Jabber Scribe. I'm st I'm sitting here typing in your name as you be as you're up here at the mic. If you don't show me your badge, people in the room don't know who you are. You, yes, but you, it's like is I. It in the mode where he can it, it, it's like I. I, I call yeah. it. <laughs> so oh, yeah. uh, make sure your badge is fully visible. Thank you. Oh, okay. I'll fix the page. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's it took me like a tree presentation. Yeah. Can I? Yes. Okay. So I'm here actually to speak about like yet another, you know, uh, flooding reduction technology here. It is something that, you know, uh, comes out of the brain of Hank Smith. So, you know, he wanted to present here, but he, you know, he couldn't actually make it. So this is something we started to work upon from since the last, you know, uh, IETF in Montreal. And we were actually thinking like, okay, you know, we have some flooding, you know, reduction algorithm already out there but there might be a way to actually, you know, make it even more simple. You know, the word simple was already mentioned before. We like simple, simple are good things. And if it can be implemented also on the router, you know, running already ISES, and if the router can be extended with like something, you know, very simple, eh? like no additional SPFs, no complex signaling, something that just follows the traditional routing, I think that would be a simple solution. So that's what I'm gonna be presenting here. So what are we gonna be doing here? I'm gonna be talking about something which is like fully distributed, something which will work across any kind of topology of what you have available. And I will just hope that my explanation will justify the simplicity of the work because I tend to think, you know, I tend to explain things more complicated than they actually are in reality. So I'll do my best. So, yeah, so, so in essence, what we are going to be doing here eh, is if you have like two boxes uh, in the network and you're connected with multiple links, then what we really would like to have is that, you know, that we don't float across the links between, between all of the links between those two boxes. We would like to have like one of the links between the two boxes which is used for floating. So that is the, the master plan. And to actually achieve that, we use like TLVs just like in the previous proposal. And we also use something, you know, so one TLV is gonna be used to identify a floating anchor. So the technology, what, what I'm describing here, is based upon creating a flooding tree and the tree, the root of the tree is going to be our flooding anchor. So th that is going to be basically like a simple TLV. I will explain a little bit more about it. That TLV will be set in the LS, it will be, you know, part of the LSP and it will indicate it's an anchor. Gunter, quick question. Yeah, this is AC Linda. Uh, what, is that the only thing it reduces is parallel links? It reduces ECMP, right? Like in a in a clone network, true, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay. You, you, okay. I'll, I'll explain later. I, I, yeah, I, that's what I thought. Okay. I, I even have pictures. Okay. <laughs> pictures are good. Pictures are good. I don't only have text; I have pictures also. So I'm like super advanced here. So, and then the other extension I have is, uh, 
you know, if a particular router determines, you know, what is going to be is, you know, best linked towards the fluent anchor. Yeah? So that's a local decision. He actually needs to signal it upstream towards the anchor to tell the other guy that he selected that particular link as the floating link itself. So to do that, we actually, you know, use like another TLV in the ISH. So I'm going to be skipping this. I'm going to be jumping directly to pictures, okay, because people like pictures. So what you see here on the classic flooding, yeah, so you see the router, you know, router 13 here in the middle, uh, sorry, router 23. So assume router 23 gets like a new LSP. It actually ships it upstream, that's the blue arrow. It goes to the router on top. That router actually, you know, depending on if it is newer or not, it will actually send that LSP, you know, to everywhere, and then the everywhere will send LSPs back. So you have like this flooding storm thing going on. Now, that is not very optimal. So that is what we would like to avoid. So what we will you know, achieve here with our minimal flooding eh, so is the desired behavior. That if router 23 creates like a new LSP that actually you know, ships it up, 22 in this case, I missed routers, okay, it doesn't really matter. So on router 22, because like a new LSP, it ships it up and not only the blue lines actually are part of our flooding topology. So it actually, you know, router 12 will then just ship it over towards router 11 or router 13 and so on. So the blue lines is actually a minimal flooding topology. Now the big question is how do we go from the classic thing towards the minimal flooding thing? And that's what I'm, you know, what we actually came up with. So how does it work? So the first step, you know, you see the topology here. So I, again, the topology what I'm using is just a random topology. By the way, am I going, am I going quick enough or? No, you need to. I need to go faster because, okay. I will go faster, so it will become more complex. So I have like, you know, uh, I just select one of the routers in my network as being the floating anchor. And that actually, that guy will set, you know, this TLV saying like, I'm the floating anchor. And that LSP gets floated everywhere. So the first step that happens is for the routers directly attached to the floating anchor. Huh? Actually, they will say, okay, you know, I know who the floating anchor is now, which interface points towards the floating anchor. And that interface, uh, here, for example, uh, here, you actually say, okay, on this interface, I would like to do flooding, and on the other interfaces, you're actually gonna be doing flooding you know, suppression. Now, that is very good if this guy gets an LSP and he wants to, to ship it up. But of course, if there is an LSP coming from somewhere else, like from here, it needs to go down also. So the upstream, you know, the router going up towards the anchor needs to be aware about which is the floating, you know, the floating link. So that is why we use the IIH, you know, TLV extension so that this router, this link local, can signal towards that guy, I'm gonna be using this link as my floating link. So the same kind of principle is actually happening, you know, you know, consecutively, like, you know, different times. And that is what, what you see actually in this picture. So what you have in this case, you create from your very, you know, very dense, diverse kind of topology, a topology for flooding just for the control plane, something like this. What you see here, and all of the control plane, you know, you know, all of the control plane information will actually have to go over the anchor. You can actually have one anchor, you know, but if that actually fails, you will actually fall back to traditional flooding, which is maybe undesired. You can actually, you know, set up a secondary anchor you know, for resiliency in your infrastructure. So it actually works very well. So what you actually, you know, what we're doing here is we actually, you know, in essence, if you look into it, the way we actually are distributing our LSPs and control plane traffic for, from a routing perspective is very similar to what you actually do with like a PIM sparse mode tree towards the round the root point. It's only used for control plane packets, not for data forewarning at all. You don't need any additional, you know, SPFs or anything else complex. Signaling is, you know, relatively simple. So this is again what I explained for having a more robust, you know, topology. So I also added like a bit more information about what we would like to add in the TLVs. So the first uh, TLV, so the anchor TLV, so this is the TLV used by the anchor to signal everybody else in the infrastructure, I am the anchor. So the first thing you have to put in there is like a priority, it's a priority field. To actually, you know, if you have multiple anchors, you know, to actually let the network know which is the most important one or the one which is most desired to become, you know, the real floating anchor. And then a second field is like, you know, to let everybody know how many uh, floating topologies you would like to have. 
Then in the ISH for the hellos to actually you know, signal, you know, link locally between two routers, which is going to be the floating link. Uh, so again, a very simple, you know, TLV. You're going to put like, you know, we were thinking about putting three different values in there. The first thing would be like, a, you know, a floating suppression indicator. So this actually would be uh, the adjacent, you know, the router itself determines which is going to be this, the link to, pointing towards the anchor. And that actually you're going to be setting in there, okay, this is going to be the link, it's going to be suppressed, yes or no. Uh, another field would be, you know, in, in there to actually give the actual suppression itself, the actual suppression on the link, which can be used for a troubleshooting kind of perspective, which could be very handy. And then a third, you know, piece of information which is in there is, you know, if you want to have like a bit more advanced, you know, algorithm or whatever in there. Uh, like the number of active flooding adjacencies. This actually can then be used to optimize your flooding topology based upon the degree of connectivity. So that is something we can do. It's also fully backward compatible, so you can actually introduce this, uh, you know, gradually if you desire to do that. And in essence, you know, what it results to is like, you know, if a router doesn't really support this and it cannot inject the ISA, you know, the, the hello TLV, then there is no flooding suppression, and we just fall back to you know classic traditional flooding at the node itself. Anyway, so we actually have some you know other additional text written up already. You know, if you actually go flooding between trees, uh, in essence, you know the you will have to make the eternal trade-off. Eh? Uh, trade-off being you know either you go for high speed or you go for stability, which actually means you go a little bit slower. And that is a trade-off we're actually going to be making also. The, the going slower will be based upon the degree of connectivity. So I think I'm going to be leaving it over there with this slide on the on the thing because I see AC, you know, almost kicking me, you know, out of stage. Any questions, comments, and so onwards? I, I have a question. Is it does this actually just end up computing a minimal spanning tree? It computes uh, like a sparse tree, uh, but it actually just like a rendezvous, you know, like a multicast rendezvous point. So you create like a tree, but you don't do it based upon like any kind of SPF or whatever. You use the information of what you have available. You know where the anchor is. Just select the link, which is, you know, most close to it. And that's yeah, it. Yeah, no, I understood the mechanism. I was just wondering if the result was that, that you ended up with that. Um, Les Ginsburg. So in the spirit of uh, Chris's uh, proposal to take all of the, the multiple drafts, because now we have one more. Yes, one um, more. Yep. Do you do you see or are do you see any reason why we could not take whatever ideas are relevant from your draft, incorporate it into one draft which represents the the mechanics of the flooding topology and have other draft or drafts which work on the algorithms? Do you see this as a reasonable way forward? So I see. <laughs> that's, that's that's a good one. So. The reason we, you know, we created this draft is because, you know, it's actually, if you look into it, you know, because Hank, you know, has written some ISS code like in the past, you know, we actually, you know, envisioned this as being like relatively simple to implement on an existing ISS implementation, okay? Now, if, you know, we want, right now, the idea is just, you know, existing is sort of like being created, how to move this forward, knowing the like multiple drafts, you know, what? I, I don't, you know, I, I can talk to you afterwards, not a problem at all. We can figure that one out. I will cut the mic after Chris. Hi, Tony Lee Arista. Um, so I'd like to reiterate some comments that we had in private email, but just for yep. the benefits of the working group. Um, my concerns with this are all about the diameter of the result and also the degree. Uh, the diameter is key because that controls the, the speed that the flooding is going to give you. Uh, a graph with a very large diameter, your LSP flooding is going to have to take many hops and that's going to impact convergence. The degree, if the degree of the node is too high, and especially in this case when you've got redundant anchors, uh, you could get an anchor that gets flooded uh, by an LSP update and that could cause instability at that node. Uh, so those are things are both things, I think, need to be addressed. Yes, and and again, Tony, you know that is why you know the while I mentioned like in the next version, we actually we have some some text about it, which was like inspired by your comments, you know, and that's why you know we have like some sort, you know, we actually we have a solution which trades off speed by convergence. Yes. 
and uh, Chris Bowers. Uh, so I just wanted to point out that I'm, I'm very supportive of this. Um, it it's, doesn't really seem to me that it fits into the framework of, of Tony's draft or Tony et al's draft in that it's not just a distributed protocol, but it's distributed plus some signaling with these TLVs. So it's not just like a subset of that, I believe. Um, that would be my my take. I mean, it would. I think uh, it could be made to to be one overarching thing, but I think there would have to be work to to accomplish that. Uh, we really have to. We're Chris, like ten Chris, minutes over. Sorry, Chris Martin. I just wanted to say one thing because um, Chris and Chris came, so I gave him <laughs> my spot. Um, back to Tony's point. I, the the nature or the na the notion of a flooding tree is kind of, I don't want to say it's obvious, and Gunther, I don't mean this in a bad way, so we could have, I mean, obviously, that's the first step you would take. I mean, it doesn't seem to be, uh, the coverage is, is not the same. I think the resiliency is not there and the diameter issues are there, so I just wanted to make that clear. I mean, we kind of thought of it right away. I don't know if it's the best approach. Thanks. So where's the You got it. I think this is it, right? Yeah, that's it. Where's the thing to make it full screen? Oh, this is a different thing. Oh, okay. This is, this is yeah. When Jeff said, "Don't don't do this," what he meant. It's not. It's not. But we're just gonna have to run with it like yeah, this. Yeah. I think. Where's the view? It's not a map. Uh, uh, yeah. Why don't we just go? Can Can I start? Yeah. Go. Yeah, I'm Huai Mochan from Huawei Technology. Today, I'm going to present. Uh, Link state of flooding reduction. So this covers uh, OSPF and ISS. Next page. Okay, maybe we can't do that. So in uh, zero, zero, in version zero, so we focus on distributed mode for flooding reduction. So in addition to that, we also talk about uh, centralized mode and the static mode for flooding reduction. That's in the, our zero, 0 version. So in our zero 01 version, uh, we made extensions. So in, we allow operators to select a mode. They can select distributed mode, centralized mode, or static mode. So we can also allow customers to select uh, algorithms for computing flooding topology. In addition to that, it also allow customers to enable flooding topology, for a flooding reduction, also roll back from flooding reduction to normal flooding. So after version 01, we, we deliver a couple of versions which address comments from uh, the list and from the IETF meetings. And then right now we have a 04 version. So in the current version, we have uh, uh, this stuff. One is that we, for both centralized version and uh, distributed mode, we have backup pass, which can be used to backup flooding topology split. So for centralized mode, we have uh, messages for uh, flooding topologies. So include a couple, including a couple of uh, topology, uh, flooding topology encodings. And then we have uh, encodings for backup pass. And then we have, in this draft, we have our uh, extension for uh, all different the IGPs, OSP version two, version three, and ISS. Next page. No, not all right. <laughs> <laughs> So this is for a uh, backup for flooding topology split. So when we con uh, construct a flooding topology, normally we have two uh, objectives. One objective is that we would like to have uh, a flooding topology and then which can be used to reduce the flooding uh, greatly. So in this case, we should have a slim flooding topology. That's one objective. At the same time, we also would like to have a flooded topology, which is more is kind of a reliable means 
tolerance to failures. So in this case, we need to have a flat topology, which is very flat. So this is a contradictory, right? So in, it's very hard. So in order to get around this, we propose a backup pass, using backup pass to backup flooding uh, topology split. So in this way, we can have a very slim topo flooding topology. At the same time, we can also achieve for the tolerance. So for example, for a critical node in, on, uh, on the flooding topology, if we can compute a backup pass. When this uh, critical node is done, and then we can flood the link state using the backup pass for that node, at the same time, the remaining topology. So we can quickly flood the link state to every live node. So using this way, we can also achieve for the tolerance for multiple failures. So for example, if we have multiple failures, node failures or link failures, so in this case, we can use backup pass for this failure node or link, and then at the same time, the remaining topologies. So we can flood a link state using remaining flood topology and then the backup pass. So in this way, link state can quickly distribute to every live load in the topology. So next page. So this is the message for uh, flood the flooding topology for centralized mode. So we know for flooding topology, which can be represented by the links on the flooding topology. So those links we can very easily encode it. So we can start uh, for each node. We know there's a, a links attached to that node. So we can just uh, encode the that node, we call the local node. And then the remote node, which is connected by that flood link. So for each node, we encode the local node and then the remote node. So we just use a, a node index. In addition to that, we can also give the size of uh, that uh, uh, node index. So in this way, we can achieve a very efficient efficient encoding of uh, the links. For here, we give an example. For example, for uh, we consider a uh, node, uh, lo local load with short for LN1. So we have three links on the flooding topology, which is the green link. So to remote load one, remote load two, remote load three, so three links. In this case, we have encoding for local node LN1, and then we encoded the remote node, which is a three node, node one, remote node one, remote two, remote node three. So three links. So local node index, and then plus the number of nodes, and then the, the three node index. And then we also give the size, the indication of the size of uh, the index. So in this way, we, we have a very simple and efficient uh, node uh, link encodings. So next page. So for each node, for the links connect to the node on the flooding topology, we encode the links. And then all those links, we can put in a TLV, we call the flooding topology a link TLV. You're, you know you're already at about eight minutes. Okay. Yeah, almost, almost done. Okay. And then this TLV can put in the flooding topology opaque glasses, and then we can flood. That's the uh, flooding topology encoding. Next page. So this one uh, is an improvement for uh, uh, topology, uh, flood topology encoding. So we can just uh, encode encode uh, the whole uh, part of topology or whole flooding topology in one data structure. In this way, we can have a more efficient encoding. Next page. So this is a, a encoding about a, a backup pass. So we have a, a encoding for backup pass for load uh, for node. And then this is a, also very simple, just we have a encoding for the pass by load uh, index, right? And then for each node, we may have a, a number of uh, backup pass. We, we may have multiple pass, backup pass. And then 
for each pass, we have pass length and then the list of nodes on, on, on the pass. So for this uh, backup, backup pass, we can put it in the uh, TLV, and then this TLV can be put in the OPEC LSAs. So similarly, we can do that for the, for, for the backup for the link. So, so this is only for, uh, used for the centralized mode. So, right, so we can see that we have a backup pass for flooding topology split. So in this way, we can achieve uh, the objective, reduce the flood topology, uh, flood, uh, links to the flooding significantly. At the same time, we achieve the, for the tolerance. And also we have uh, the encoding for the flooding topology. We give us a couple ways, options. And then I think this one is also very simple and efficient. I think also, so regarding the, the one, we have a solution for centralized one mode and also distributed mode. I think this one is also comprehensive solutions. So regarding this one, I would like also ask reductions because, but I last, because the last ATF, uh, some people propose merge. I also, I think it's a good way to merge because same, problem and then maybe different solutions and then the cover different ways and then maybe if that's that's my opinion okay i don't think we have i don't think we have time for too many comments i guess we're going to have some uh discussions uh, on the straw man and how these drafts relate uh dave can you do for 10 minutes instead of 15. okay Okay, thank you. Thanks. This is being presented in another working group too, right? Yeah. No? Oh, shit. Yeah. We, we tried to get it on a couple of other agendas, but it didn't quite happen. Anyway, this is a problem space that I found really, really interesting. And there was stuff from something I'd done in a past life that I thought was applicable. So I thought I'd throw my hat in the ring or Shark Tank or whatever you want to characterize this exercise as. Um, so anyway, I have a distributed algorithm for the constrained flooding of IGP advertisements, and it kind of, oh, not that one. What? <laughs> oh, what's this? How did that? I don't even know what half of those acronyms how, are. How did that happen? <laughs> I don't know. I, I swear I thought you just did the right thing. Yeah, I, I thought I just did the right thing. Uh, <laughs> <No>. Whoa. <laughs> no, it's, no, and identity oh, I encoding in my draft either. Yeah. It, it must It must have. Are we so over time it went to the next? Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> what happened was it went. Well, this is eating my time. <laughs> there, there, there's other there's other tabs open. That's the problem. Okay. And it went to the next. Yeah. I, I hate the way that this. Yeah, me, it's right above. At any rate, well, they're solving that. Um, <laughs> there's oh, sorry. It says no. Uh, okay. Grow. Grow. Just close those tabs. Okay. Yeah, and we don't want the agenda. We want the materials. What happened to my materials? I, I, that's what I'm saying. I don't know. I have no idea what. There, yeah. yeah. Is it? Is it? <laughs> wow. We really don't have time for this. No. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd stared into my plot, but I think I would lose myself along the way. So I'm. Here's one. You're gonna have to bear with. Yeah, I'm starting to think this this like pre-setup laptop thing is not that useful. <laughs> I mean, really, like it just worked better when we used our own. Oh, look at look, what what did it do there? When you tried, it didn't work so well. Yeah, hurrah! Well, that's because I didn't have. Okay, I had it here. Okay, and next trick. That and then went to grow. Okay, here. Oh, even better. Okay, so Tony brought forward this sort of general problem on how to produce a constrained flooding topology for dense graphs, something that would be immune to single failures and would reduce the number of copies of an LSA that, that would be continually interrupting the control plane. Um, what this draft discusses is a distributed algorithm for computing the flooding topologies with desirable properties I have only really looked at it for bipartite style graphs, which actually could be you know, it's with multiple hierarchies, and the modified ones with uh, intra-tier links. 
Uh, it may be applicable to other topologies, but that would be for further study. My understanding, this was kind of the problem space at the moment, so that's what I focused on. What the approach is, is to do, use two diversely routed spanning trees such that each node in the dense graph is biconnected to the flooding topologies. The spanning trees are computed by each node, or the, the, each node figures out what its role is in the spanning tree by computing it from the basis of information that's in the IGP. The flooding topology itself is the sum of the spanning trees. So for example, the first copy of an LSA received by a node, it doesn't care which spanning tree it got it from. It, that's the one it propagates, and of course the next one is considered to be redundant and thrown away. Because the key thing here is, is I'm trying to achieve resiliency with nothing being able to think, so in essence it's a one plus one arrangement for flooding, and everybody gets two copies of everything. Um, the actual flooding itself is split horizon between upstream and downstream for LSAs received from an upstream interface, and that's one of the ways we explicitly constrain flooding. Um, and like I said, the net result is in a fault-free topology, all nodes participating in the flooding topology will receive two copies, uh, and even under single failure scenarios and many multiple failure scenarios, they will receive at least one. What makes it work is the tie-breaking algorithm from 802.1aq, which is also documented in RFC 6329, for those of you who want to see the IETF version of it. Um, and when we worked on the algorithms for 802.1aq, I guess 12 years ago now, one of the things we did was we had tools for visualizing the networks that we built. And one of the things that was embodied in this was the idea to, if I wanted to do load spreading, and this was for originally for Ethernet, we had this notion of an algorithm mask that would be involved in the tie-breaking algorithm, and therefore we could do different variations of tie-breaking. And when we used the bookends of the tie-breaking algorithm, then we got, uh, in most networks, very or completely diverse trees out of the deal. Now, the actual tie-breaking itself is, as you take the algorithm mask, you XOR it with the lexicographically sorted list of node IDs in the path. You rank those and select the, uh, either the lowest or the highest, depending on what you're doing, and that is your tie-breaking. The interesting property of this is, is that any component of the shortest path is also the shortest path. And what that means is as you're traversing a graph, you can ditch an awful lot of options. So this thing is n log n in complexity, but not all n log n's are equal, would be my observation. And this one is really, really quite frugal of resources. To give you a visual representation, this is what uh, the, the flooding topology would look like. It's based on one spanning tree rooted at zero, which is the red one, and it's constructed using the low tiebreaker. So you'll notice all the transit nodes at, at any given distance from that route is the low node ID. And the other one is rooted on 55, and it is using the high ID. So all the transit nodes for the green tree uh, end up transiting the high ID of any given set of nodes that's equidistant from it. Um, the net result is, is that everybody is biconnected to the flooding topology. Hence, they will receive two copies. Now, the flooding rules themselves are really quite simple. If an LSA is received from an upstream adjacency and it's the first copy you've received, flood on all downstream member adjacencies. And if you are also connected to nodes that are not participating in the flooding topology, you use normal flooding rules for those particular adjacencies. Those are described as non-participant adjacencies in the draft. If I'm received from a downstream adjacency and it's a new LSA, flood on all the non-participating adjacencies and all member adjacencies except the adjacency of arrival. And so uh, this is examples are illustrated at the bottom here. And the key idea is, is that although I've illustrated them as the red and the green spanning trees, in essence, we're dealing with the sum of them. So there is no protocol changes to the actual LSA flooding itself to make this work. Now the required protocol changes, um, I need the ability of a node to advertise that it wants to participate in the flooding topology in the IGP. This would be some form of capability TLV. And I would need knowledge of the routes. Ideally that would be advertised in the IGP 
or there would have to be sufficient information to allow some form of distributed root election. I don't actually solve that problem. I simply provide a lot of stuff on what is required in terms of what, what any uh, means of root selection would need to achieve. Now, that the, probably the key limitation to this is, is I do not bound the number of copies that a node needs to generate. I bound the number of copies a node will receive, but for example, if I look at node 55, it will generate, what is it, 8, 16, 24 copies it will have to produce to send. It's only ever going to receive two copies, but it has to send, and, uh, and that is a function of the physical topology. That's not something that's artificially constrained. Um, intuitively, the only way I can constrain that is by extending the flooding diameter, and I considered that to be undesirable. Uh, so the draft contains a discussion of the problem space, provides the algorithms, the flooding rules, a discussion on the requirements for root selection, uh, how to interact with non-participants in the flooding topology, um, has some discussion about re-optimization. Right now, the whole idea is, is I'm trying to maintain a fully redundant structure at all times, which means when failures occur, I, at some point I'm going to have to go and clean it up afterwards and proceed to restore full, full one plus one failure tolerance. Um, it also suggests some strategies for dealing with catastrophic multiple failures, where, for example, the extreme worst case would be losing both routes simultaneously. Um, the draft doesn't define the protocol elements at this particular point in time. It simply discusses what is needed. And like I said, it doesn't define route selection procedures. It only provides what the requirements are for the routes relative to each other. So to very quickly summarize the characteristics of the solution, the structure of the flooding topology is interconnected one plus one multipoint to multipoint trees. The protocol changes requirement are an advertisement of the two routes, an advertisement of the desire and the capability to participate in the flooding topology. The computation that each node has to do is order two times n log n, but like I said, that's a relatively frugal n log n in the spectrum of n log n's that are out there. Um, the maximum diameter of the flooding topology is twice the distance of leaf to spine in a fault-free network. And in a single failure worst case, it's twice the distance from the leaf to the spine, plus the distance between the roots minus one. Because the worst case is when it's a uh, inter-root link that goes down, or a node on the inter-root path, which means things need to fully loop back around, such that every node in the network sees a copy of every LSA that needs to be flooded. And the typical and maximum number of LSAs a node will receive will be two. So next steps, there's a bit, I've done a bit more thinking about the root selection. I want to document that. And otherwise, I'm just interested in collecting feedback and figuring out where we go from here. And it looks like that's going to be a fun exercise. So, Tony. Uh, Tony P. Juniper, right, discussion open. Um, so I didn't do, look into all the super gritty nitty gritty uh, detail of the algorithm. And I wasn't actually aware that this work has been done until I saw you draft. Uh, circulating. So I basically went after the thing in a more by gut feeling uh, uh, what the properties of this thing will be. And one thing I'm confused about, so will that produce the lowest diameter uh, tree or will that stabilize on a not necessarily lowest diameter? Because I saw this tie breaking, but I didn't understand whether it's like a spanning tree that tie breaks to the point it has an optimal solution or where there's some stability point. It's on the shortest paths, and seeing as we're discussing tree networks, I believe the diameter would correspond to the to minimum the physical path. diameter. Okay, which is not the shortest tree, but the shortest path. Okay, yeah. fair enough answer. The other um, question is, did anybody do any work uh, choosing a route per originator that you reflot? Um, I don't... We did look at that when we looked at multicast ah. some time ago. All uh, right, so back in the, the dot one AQ work, uh, I did consider it in this case. Uh, it's just that uh, I ended up going at the two spanning trees because 
I could still produce failure cases with a root um, per originator uh, that I did not think the, the resiliency would cover. I can't remember why I ended up thinking that. I would be very interested in discussion because right now, I mean, you don't have any phenol control, right? A degree control on the node. Whereas when we go in this direction, you could possibly address this problem. And otherwise, you know, yeah, elegant work. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So, so we'll go to the next one. Obviously, we're not going to do all, standardize all these different distributed algorithms, but uh, one criteria, I think, ones that are implemented and have implementation results would be preferred over ones that don't. Yeah. Well, I, I, question for you, not for Dave. Or you go ahead, Chris, sorry. No, I was just going to say, I mean, I, I think that not just the implementation, right, but it also um, differentiation. Right. Yes. Like like the sparse links and the spanning tree look very similar. Like I mean, they're yes. not exactly the same, right? But right. The, except the, the one is done by handshaking and one's done by computation. Right. So, uh, a lot of thunder rolling. Just a question for you guys on what's going to happen next. So there's this uh, straw man on separating the algorithms from the rest of the work. There are several proposals. You said that maybe there's going to be an interim. You also said that um, you're going to discuss the proposal on the list. Is that going to happen first and then the interim? Are we going to discuss everything on the interim? Uh, that decision of we only are going to choose one, is that part of the proposal? Just so that everyone knows what's going to happen. So I, I think that there's two things to discuss. As long as we can agree to separate the two things, then we can have an, I, I think you have to agree on that first. And then we have an interim based on the results of what you know, right? What that is? We we've already agreed to split out the spine leaf optimization on its own as a as a small incremental uh, uh, one level flooding optimization. Now we're going to put the straw man for distributing the centralized and uh, distributed algorithm frameworks, and then uh, I think we should at least have an interim so everybody can talk. I mean, I think the interim is most useful about the algorithms. Yes. Right? I mean, okay. I, I think we just need to settle this two drafts covering the same exact technology, right? I mean, it's <laughs> we, we don't need two two drafts to do yes. that. So, so we settle that, and then then it's a discussion of of the algorithms, whether it's centralized or distributed. Right. right. Less. I, I actually think we're not as far behind as I thought. Uh, no, and we could, I mean, it depends on how long, if we want to, we can shorten the break, but I don't, maybe people yell at us. Yeah. yeah you can go faster. I read this draft. You should be able to do faster. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you should right. be able to do faster. Can you do full size, or is that yeah. Yeah. No. possible? Okay. Um, no. This is a bit of ISIS 101, but. Um, it seems that there's some reasons why this, this draft was written, um, uh, because of some real world events. Are we not able to go full no. screen? It, 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 apparently we need to do PDF from now on if yes. we're gonna use this dumb thing. Okay. Um, so what were the motivations for this draft? Um, there, there was some uh, discussion that uh, it's hard to find an explicit statement about what to do when there's a TLD that's not supposed to be in a particular PDU. Um, there have been some interoperability issues actually seen uh, in the field. Um, things such as LSPs being rejected because there were unsupported TLVs or sub-TLVs in a particular LSP, um, or a TLV was malformed. Uh, the purge handling uh, has gotten, has several modes uh, because of past work and there's been some confusion around that. Um, and uh, the, this is, this leads to some significant operational problems because you can end up with inconsistent LSP DBs on different nodes of the network and then clearly your routing is broken. Oh, I can't do this. Okay. So what do we have? We have a TLV code points registry um, that looks kind of like this. I only used one example, uh, TLV. Uh, gives you the value and the name and what PDUs the TLV is allowed in. Uh, yes in a column means uh, this TLV is allowed in this particular PDU type. A no means it's disallowed. Um, 
the question then is how to handle uh, the case where a TLV is in a PDU that it's disallowed. Next. So uh, if we go back to the base spec, uh, 10589, uh, there's a statement in there that says any codes in a received PDU that are not recognized shall be ignored. Well, unsupported uh, and equals disallowed. Uh, because maybe my implementation supports the TLV, but your implementation does not. And I cannot expect you, if I'm going to be able to roll out new TLVs uh, hitlessly, um, I can't make decisions on the assumption that every node of the network understands what this TLV is like. Um, so if I get a TLV in a PDU and it's not supposed to be there, then I need to ignore it as per the base specification. And that's what this little table is showing. Let's go to the next slide. Um, so, it's critical to remember that the unit of update for ISIS is an LSP, it's a PDU, it's not a TLV. When we say we accept uh, the, the flooding update, we're not saying we accept every TLV or we understand every TLV inside the LSP. We're saying that the LSP itself has passed the validation checks. What are the validation checks? There's a checksum, uh, there's authentication, which optionally may be used. And then, of course, there's the rules as defining is, is this LSP newer than what I have in the database? Uh, if it's not, then I need to, to send the newer copy. Um, if, if what I have is older, then I need to accept it. Key point, TLV content is not relevant for, in terms of accepting the LSP. The validation checks are on the PDU level, not on the TLV level. Next slide. So what interoperability issues uh, have we seen? You have a case here where um, you start out and Node A has sent uh, an LSP with sequence number 99, everybody's happy. Then it generates a new copy, puts a TLV in there that is in some way bad, you know, doesn't follow the, the specification in some way. Um, what happens? B follows the rules. He looks at the LSP and says, well, the, the checksum is fine, the authentication is fine, I will accept this. Then he sends it to C, and C goes, gee, this TLV is not, not to my liking. Uh, I'm not going to accept the LSP. So what do we end up with? We end up with nodes A and B that have uh, version 100 of the LSP, and nodes C and D that have version 99. This is clearly non-functional. Next slide. Uh, purges get to be a little more complex because we start out with the base specification 10.589 which suggested that, well, if I go to purge an LSP, uh, there's no point in keeping the, the content, the TLVs that are in the LSP, but it didn't actually require that the TLVs be removed. Uh, it just suggested that that was a good policy. So if I get a purge based on 10.589 rules um, and it has some TLVs in it, I can still accept it. Um, if it has no TLVs in it, I can still accept it. When we moved to cryptographic authentication, that was no longer possible because it meant that uh, an attacker could simply disrupt the network by uh, uh, setting the remaining lifetime to zero, not changing the content in the, the LSP at all, and the authentication uh, hash would still uh, pass. Uh, this was clearly broken, so 5304 uh, stated Okay, if you're using cryptographic authentication, the only TLV that you can have is the authentication TLV. And 5310, uh, 5310 followed suit. When the purge origination uh, TLV was introduced, uh, we now had uh, an additional case because we needed to allow a new TLV in purges. But if we followed 5304 rules strictly, then anybody that's following that would say, oh, this has a, a TLV besides authentication, I cannot accept this. So this was not backwards compatible. So implementations that support POI um, have to have some way of allowing the operator to enable uh, uh, or disable the use of the POI TLV when cryptographic authentication is in use. Note that if you're not using cryptographic authentication, you can go back to the base 10.589 rules and say, well, okay, uh, anybody should be accepting a purge regardless of the TLV content. Next slide. 
Um, so what are the, P the, the POI implementation issues? Um, again, not everybody in the network may support POI. Um, so you need some control to enable the use of POI when you're using cryptographic authentication. Um, if what, what we then uh, uh, did as part of the uh, this, uh, POI uh, support, uh, we added the possibility of uh, other TLVs perhaps being allowed in purges in the future. And in fact, that has happened. We now have four TLVs that are allowed in purges. And that's why there's a column in the code points registry that I showed on the first slide, and which says, hey, this TLV is allowed in a purge or it's not allowed in a purge. Again, in order to be extensible, if I add a new TLV that's allowed in a purge, but um, you, somebody else out there has an older implementation and they don't uh, understand what that TLV is, I could have an interoperability problem. So if I implement POI support, I have to do it in such a way that I can say, okay, there's TLVs that I know about, and there's TLVs that were not defined when I wrote my implementation, and I don't know about them. The ones that I know about, I can say based upon the state of the registry when I wrote my implementation, this is allowed in a, in a purge or it's not allowed in a purge. The TLVs that get defined later, my implementation doesn't understand them, I cannot predict whether they're allowed or not, I have to ignore them when I receive a purge. And the next slide is an example of uh, the interoperability problems that happen uh, with purges. I think maybe in the interest of time, we'll not go through the, the steps. Um, again, this, is, this draft is written for clarification. There are no protocol changes introduced by any of what the draft talks about. This is just trying to make things clear um, and especially so because we have had interoperability issues in the field, and um, we, we're just trying to make sure that uh, that's less likely to happen. Tony P. Juniper, the last thanks for doing the dirty laundry again. We shall be not in need of those drafts. That's the second one you're bringing, right? Yeah. Uh, highly encouraged, absolutely for adoption. If you need any help, call authorship. We're here. Thanks. That's, that's on my mind, Tony, in fact. <laughs> so, just interrupt. Great work, very much needed, and hopefully foundation for really security framework that could be also a formal reference. Anytime you write new draft here and our friend from security ask what happens when I've got formal reference, say, this tells us what happens when. So great stuff, and looking forward to OSPF as well. Okay, thank you. One of the... <laughs> oh, okay, security, okay, okay. okay. Well, I thought you meant the invalid TLD. Okay. 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 But well, one, of the re one of the reasons for writing this was so that new drafts would not have to repeat this content over and over and over, just references. Yeah, uh, Michael Abrams, having been bitten by this kind of interop issues 10 years ago with IPv6 enablement where it would drop the entire you know, a pack it just because it's so an IPv6 TLV and there, yeah, please, I would like that not to happen again. I had to spin up a second IGP to do my IPv6 in a rollout for two years. Okay, uh, great. It looks like we have a lot of plus ones on this being great. <laughs> in just some time, let's move to the next one. I'm Shadda from Juniper. Uh, so I, I have a question on the uh, allowing uh, unknown TLVs in the purge. So. Um, are you suggesting that uh, uh, an implementation that does not understand a TLV in the purge, it should, if it's authenticated, you should accept it? Or are you suggesting any other TLV should also be accepted? I'm saying when you write, you, you have version N of your implementation. At that point in time, you understand some set of TLVs. A new TLV can be introduced after your implementation was written. Clearly, you don't know whether that TLV is allowed in a purge or not because you just don't understand it. So you have to accept it. Um, what if a TLV that I understand uh, has now get is being allowed? In, uh, there's a new draft that allows that TLV in the purge uh, for some so, reason. Okay, then I think we're, that's another. We're introducing a new backwards compatibility problem, and we would have to, if we wrote such yeah, a draft, we would have to define the that is a security issue, way. right? You cannot accept. Yeah, yeah. 
Agreed. Agreed. That's where this is going. Okay. Go ahead. You can summarize. No. I, no. Okay. Okay. Do 10 minutes instead of 15? I may even do faster. Yeah. Okay, good. That is allowed? Yes. <laughs> it's allowed. Okay. So this thing actually, you know, is... Uh, <clears throat> I don't want to go there, okay? <laughs> I don't want to go there. <clears throat> so this idea actually, you know, is something, you know, what I believe is relatively simple. And, you know, and if you look into it, it's kind of surprising it never popped up before because, you know, we see like a lot of proposals to, you know, uh, improve all of the floating things to improve our convergence time. But there is like another component, you know, with IGP routing, which can really, really speed up convergence significantly. and if you look into how the flooding actually is operated and the way our IGPs actually uh, do the flooding, so they actually you know take care of the packet pacing, they take care of reliability, retransmission, and so onwards, you know, and that actually has been unchanged since you know the origin of you know the technology itself. Now the way technology progressed, you know, we now have TCP, and it sort of made us wonder, like, okay, you know, why do we actually first want to you know improve our flooding topologies, but not really look into like, you know, how routers do the flooding of control plane information between the routers themselves. So we said, okay, maybe let's have a look into TCP and actually, you know, ex you know use and outsource all of the flooding stuff into TCP, let TCP take care of the retransmission and the packet pacing and then the reliability and all those kind of things. So that's what we're doing here. So, you know, so the proposal what we have here is for ISAS, you know, I'm pretty sure we can do the same thing for OSPF, but you know, at this point in time, you know, we believe at least, you know, let's look at ISES first. So, in essence, uh, what it is about here huh, is indeed, you know, for, between two routers to exchange LSPs and to use TCP as a communication channel for that. Now, to actually do that, huh, the two routers need to agree between each other that they actually support, you know, exchanging, you know, uh, all of the you know flooding information over the TCP session itself. Uh, so we actually we define like a new TLV for that in the ISH. Now at the same time, because we also believe BGP is like ultra cool and it also uses TCP and uh, and it's a TCP byte stream. We also and, and BGP is using some sort of like a like a you know a synchronization marker header you know in the TCP. We actually said like you know if we go down the road of using TCP for our control plane information. We should do the same thing as what we have in BGP. So we're going to be defining also like a small marker to have synchronization in the byte stream, very similar to the way BGP is using it. So if you look into the different scaling factors of ISAS, yeah, so the first thing we have is like, okay, you know, each router has like a number of adjacency, like neighboring routers. We cannot really do that much about it to reduce it. The second thing we can look at, you know, to improve scalability is, you know, how do we deal with flooding? So if we improve that, then we actually we improve you know our scaling you know capabilities here. So one way is to actually you know work upon new flooding topologies. Another way is actually you know we look into how flooding itself is done. And then the third thing what we can actually look at is like you know in is how SPF is done. Uh, right now we have Dijkstra. Dijkstra is you know quite okay. It's not too complex, and it's probably the best we can do without creating too much additional complexity. So if you look into the middle point here, so what are the different scaling limitations here? So looking into it from an historical perspective, eh, so something what we have is our packet pacing and the throughput itself. So initially when ISDS was created between two control plane packets, there must be like about like 30 milliseconds. And the reason is because, you know, in the older implementations, if you would send too much packets at once, it may actually overload your neighbor and you actually may lose packets and, you know, all bad things kind of happen now with those 30 milliseconds, it also means that if you have like a really big network, let's say about like a thousand nodes, eh, that actually has like quite an impact because a thousand nodes will result in approximately, you know, for the full sync going from zero to everything in about like 30 seconds because we have these 30 milliseconds packets between the LSPs. That's a lot of time. We can do much faster than that because why do we have those 30 milliseconds? It's because of the older implementations of ISES and the way it was done. So the other element here is like the reliable flooding on point-to-point -point interfaces. Uh, so each, you know, LSP needs to be act on a point-to-point. -point. So that actually comes with like, you know, acting the package itself and some associated timers, you know, with it. 
And then the third element here is like, okay, the unreliability of the complete sequence number of packets. So if you're on a point-to-point -point interface and you come up, you know, with the two routers, they each exchange, you know, their link state databases using CSNMPs. In each CSNMP, we actually we can stuff in like about like 91, you know, different, you know, LSP descriptors. If you would lose one, it actually automatically, you know, multiplies itself by, you know, 91 LSPs being exchanged between each other. That's quite significant. So, and that is actually why we say, okay, you know, why not do this exchange instead of like, let ISS take care of it, you know, set up a TCP session and actually, you know, push all of the LSPs into that one. Now, of course, if you want to set up a TCP session, you need to know the IP addresses to be used, V4, V6, and you need to know the port numbers on which each of the routers actually is, you know, uh, listening. So that is something you can actually signal between each other by, you know, by, you know, creating or adding like a new TLV in the ISH in which actually have like different, uh, you know, TLVs, sub TLVs itself uh, for the port number, V4 addresses, address or addresses, and V6 address or addresses. And right now at this point in time, we think that is sufficient uh, at this, you know, at this, at this moment. And again, also because TCP uses a byte stream and because we like BGP, you know, we're gonna put like a marker in there, you know, which we have preset in our draft. So the new behavior, it's, the new behavior itself eh, is to actually establish the flooding. So in essence, you know, when the link actually comes up, they actually exchange ISHs eh, and each router will sort of like look for this new TLV to figure out the IP addresses, you know, what is used to, to also figure out the TCP port number. The router with the lowest you know, router ID will actually initiate TCP session and set it up. So from the moment the TCP session is set up, you actually will exchange only one time yeah, the an ISH over the TCP session itself to make sure that you know the guy you see on the other side is actually the guy you think he, he is. And so you can authenticate and make sure about that. So only one time you will send you know the ISH about it. The for the rest on the normal you know on the normal link between the two routers, uh, not over TCP. So the neighborship and our establishment is still being done by exchanging ISH messages on the link itself. So nothing really, you know, changes from that perspective. So it all stays the same, which is very good because if you have like a control plane failover on one of the ends, you don't want that the TCP session itself creates additional, you know, dynamics and, you know, our neighborship complexity, you know, from, from where we are. That is all, you know, described pretty well, you know, in, in, in our draft. So the nice thing is, you know, when you do this, now, what will you win? So in essence, what you win is what you see here on the bottom. Eh? It's like no more tra retransmissions of LSPs or verifications, you know, using sequence number packets, because everything now is in the hands of TCP. And that is really nice. You don't have those 30 milliseconds anymore. You can actually send as quickly as possible, as fast as your neighbor actually can accept. And TCP will take care of the windowing and about, you know, everything else. And then, of course, you know, you, you know, we also have like, you know, new behavior, like, you know, during, you know, the, you know, uh, during the floating itself. So a few small things actually change, but in essence, nothing really, you know, super dramatic. So if you receive an LSP, you know, uh, and it's the same version, the router really doesn't do anything at all. If you actually receive uh, an older version of an LSP, then basically what you do is that like the send routing message bit itself and you return like a newer LSP towards the peer. If you receive like a new LSP, then you actually you know, use it and you float it to, you know, to, to everywhere else. Yes. Uh, this was for the end of presentation from the Jabber room, so I can wait. Yeah, why don't we're, you we're also, to the end. Yeah, we're really getting end. out of time. Yeah. Uh, we got two more presentations to do yeah. in yeah. 10 minutes. Yeah, let's so. take this to the list, this, the, the discussion of this one. Okay. Okay, yeah, but I'm, I'm kind of finished, kind of like, so we actually have some, some additional thoughts and considerations. So, but in the interest of time, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip them. The only thing what I want is, and I think the draft right now is in a reasonable shape, and it would be nice to see, you know, if it can be actually, you know, adopted to the working group, yes or no. It, it just came out. <laughs> I know, <laughs> I know, but- why don't, why, don't you, why don't you start a discussion on the mailing list? It's yeah, a good draft. If we yeah, have, yes. you know, we're, we're gonna take the next slot. How, so. how many people read it? At, at the, I read it. Yeah, at, at the you, next slot, in the yeah. next slot, if we have time, we can come back and 
have discussion. There, there's one thing that I have to say. I'm, I'm going to check into it more. Uh, there is a Cisco provisional patent that has TCP flooding of the IGPs as a component of it. I'm not sure. I'm going to check with our legal to see if it's applicable or not. It doesn't go to it doesn't go into this level of detail, but I'll check on that. Okay, uh, Kenton, can you do two minutes? <laughs> Can we get the presentation up in the pass? <laughs> I'll leave it to you. I know. Unless, unless you want to see a grow presentation, I'll leave it to you. Uh, it's uh, just SRB6. Okay. Yeah, I think two minutes should be good for this. Okay. Uh, so this draft has been uh, out uh, there and uh, presented a number of times. Uh, it's more or less stable at this point and uh, just couple of changes which were uh, added in the recent update for uh, more clarification. One of it was uh, uh, clarifying that the SR algorithm TLV, which was there in the ISIS extensions uh, for SR MPLS are also applicable here uh, at SRV6. And there were some uh, function behavior points uh, and uh, .dx and DT6, which were included in the draft, but there was no a use case uh, documentation for what for what they are used for, and so we have removed uh, that in this version. So uh, really, that's the only change. Uh, uh, the next step, uh, you know, there are implementations of this uh, draft already out there, and uh, we'd like to ask for working group adoption. At this point, how many have read it? Okay, not too many. Should we, should we start a discussion if it's ready for adoption or, adopt, or adoption? Uh, I think we could just do the Adopt adoption yeah. and the people can object. If they... Right. Okay. okay. Thanks. Thanks. Great. Every time it jerks like that, it's scary. It's going back to grow. Yeah. That was, that was bizarre. Apologize for this. Uh, what I, what I figured out is we were using the agenda and not meeting materials, and the, anything that wasn't in PDF format wasn't on the agenda. So we had to go to meeting materials to get all the PowerPoint presentations. Dan? Yes. Hi. Um, Chin Wu was supposed to give this presentation, but uh, due to NetMod clash, uh, I'm standing in for him. In the interest of time, I'll try to make this as quickly as possible. Next slide, please. This works, actually. Ah. It's a I have PDF. PDF. technology. Okay, good. Uh, so this is um, it's an ID to basically provide uh, discovery of secure PCs capable of supporting uh, things like TCP AO, uh, TLS, uh, TCP MD5, so that the path computation client PCC uh, can send and receive information related to path computations uh, securely. It's a very simple. Uh, document. Essentially, we have uh, one uh, sub TLV with three options. Uh, there they are, uh, specifically uh, advertising what type of security the PC will support. Uh, so essentially, this is just uh, a sub TLV for the uh, IGP. And uh, we would like the working group to look at the document. It's a relatively recent document. I think we published it probably about six weeks ago. I think AC's already made a comment that if we use uh, uh, TCP AO, uh, we will have to provide some shared secret information. That's not currently in the document. There are some you know, potential security risks with that that we need to discuss or at least identify and disclose uh, in the document. Um, and yeah, I think that's it really. Yeah, yeah we were just going I think what we talked about was just using like an SAID. There's, we're not talking about putting any keys in there. Yeah. Uh, you know, this is coming from, you know, PC uses, uh, uses the IGPs as a tool. This has both ISIS and OSPF. And they are coming and saying that this is a good thing to do. I, I can't see any reason why we wouldn't adopt it, speaking as chair. Yeah, I mean, there's some, pre so there's some precedents here as well because there are sort of numerous PC capabilities that are advertised through the IGP. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Back when the PCE uh, working group first established, they came first OSPF and then ISIS, and we have the drafts that are referenced in this document. 
uh, refer to that, and then they're just extending more bits, and then we'll have this key ID for TCPAO as well. So, okay, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, if there's no more comments on this, there were two people that wanted to talk about TCP. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, we, we do and, have five uh, minutes. If, yeah, Tony if, and... Uh, if you guys want to bring your comments about the TCP. Yeah. Tony Lee, still at Arista. Um, so I'd like to say that I support this work. I think it's very good. And I uh, think we should consider using Quick instead of TCP. Um, this is because slow start actually is going to be a factor. Um, and I apologize because I jumped on your comment taking it to the list, so I already sent it to the list. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, well, thanks. that's good. Uh, Mika, did you have something from Jabber on the TCP? Uh, I think you said that you should take it to the list. That's why I told you. Okay. Okay. Okay, through dictatorial. <laughs> <laughs> Eat it. We finished on time, and we're going to be back here at uh, twenty. To stop, start promptly at twenty after. Uh, yeah, on on the dot. On the uh, dot. Eleven twenty. I think. I think. Looking at the presentations, I don't think we should be as rushed as we were during the first two hours. Okay. See so you back here. Yep. Oh, me too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping nobody grabs me. Actually, I'll take my phone back. Uh. <laughs> 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 <laughs>